Larissa asked me to read a couple of quotes from a man named John Piper, who's a, a well-known Bible teacher, and he talks about marriage and how it, this mystery refers to Christ and the church. And he says this, Marriage is not mainly about prospering economically. It is mainly about displaying the covenant-keeping love between Christ and His church. He says, knowing Christ is more important than making a living. Treasuring Christ is more important than bearing children. Either way, it is short. It may have many bright days, or it may be covered with clouds. But if we set our face to make of marriage mainly what God designed it to be, no sorrows and no calamities can stand in our way. Every one of them will be not an obstacle to success, but a way to succeed. The beauty of the covenant-keeping love between Christ and His church shines brightest when nothing but Christ can sustain it. Ian and I first met in 2005 at college and had a blast for 10 months getting to know each other. And I was looking through, and I found one of my favorite pictures, which I I think was actually taken right before his accident. He set up a camera on his, his tripod, and it's just a classic Ian face that to me sums up who he is. We had been dating for 10 months, and he was working an extra job for his dad, and he was on his way to work near Pittsburgh. And we got a phone call that he had been in an accident, and we didn't know if it was when he got to work or on his way. And so we got down to Pittsburgh, and I was just praying the whole time in the car that it wouldn't be his brain. After being at the hospital for a few hours, we found out that it was, and he had been in brain surgery for a few hours and had suffered a traumatic brain injury. God totally spared his life. Uh. One night, he was failing four out of five brain activity tests, and the next morning, he was doing well, and his brain was starting to respond again. I moved in with his family after the accident, so I was really involved in his therapy and just did whatever I could to make his life fun. We'd go out on dates, and looking back, it's weird because he couldn't talk and he couldn't eat. So we probably looked like complete weirdos being on dates, but we had a blast, and I just talked to him all the time. I knew that before Ian's accident, he was very serious about marriage and was ring shopping, so. I knew where he was, and that helped me so much. After he couldn't talk, I knew that he loved me, and I knew where he wanted the relationship to go because we were dating very intentionally. We just prayed that marriage would someday happen and watched all of our friends get married and start having families. That was challenging, but we just tried to hold out hope that that would be us someday. This is our board of gratefulness, and we encourage anybody who comes in to write a note of something they're thankful for. It could be really small. Mine is just Saturday mornings, and it's just a good way that we've found to be just practicing gratefulness. And Ian, I think half of yours say uh -huh. my wifey, uh -huh. which is pretty cool. Uh -huh. We decided that we couldn't really consider marriage as an option until Ian was able to communicate. But if he could communicate with me, then we could have a marriage, knowing it would be really different. But as long as Ian could talk to me, then we could make it work. So once Ian began communicating, it became a little bit more of an option. And then we just kind of watched Ian progress. Uh. Hi, husband. Uh, I don't want to be. How are you? Uh, hey, how are you? What? How are you? I'm good. Uh, uh, 
How was your day? Uh, yes. A conversation I had with his dad, it was one of those conversations where I realized this could happen. Then that August, his dad was diagnosed with brain cancer. And at that point, his dad's biggest concern was Ian and I, and whether or not we were gonna get married or step away from our relationship. He wanted us to make a decision to move our lives in some direction. He passed away before he was able to see us get engaged, but that was a huge impetus in why we started to pursue engagement. Throughout premarital counseling, we just used this momentary marriage. It was so helpful because John Piper talked a lot about primary things and secondary things, which is really important for us because when we're walking out our marriage practically, Ian can't do the secondary things like working or making a meal for me. Everything that's primary, though, he can do, which is leading me spiritually. Ian always comes back to the foundational truths of who God is and kind of reels me back in for my emotions. And that's the most important thing. We have two friends that we're going through the book with. I think we've just been able to help them see that maybe the little things that they're excited for about marriage are worth being excited about, but they're not the, the end all and be all of their marriage. But we also have so much to learn and we're learning from them and things that they share because our relationships are different and we can glean different things from each other. I think what helped us in deciding to make this commitment to each other, at least for me, is knowing that Ian wouldn't have left me if the roles were reversed and that we love each other and we know that God's gonna be faithful to our marriage. We're able to love each other with, I think, a more Christ-like love because of Ian's disability and just to understand that picture a little bit better than if you were healthy. Yeah. Do you agree? Yes. What about God enables you to have, have a happy marriage? You know. What? He's awesome. He's awesome? Yeah.